We are talking Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, and IBD on the show today. And I have such an incredible guest to share on these topics with you. His name is Dane Johnson. He's the founder and CEO of Crohn's Colitis Lifestyle and a holistic nutritionist specializing in reversing Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. So Dane has a very powerful story. He was this thriving, healthy guy in his 20s. He uh, was doing, you know, had an active modeling career uh, and, you know, looked super fit and healthy, had always been an athlete. And he ended up going on a journey in which he was in the hospital for weeks to the point that his family th flew out and like he was on his way to dying, you know, and it got really bad. And so he's going to share some of that story with you and then kind of that journey out. He had to go in a bit of hermit mode and recreate his entire reality, recreate his life patterns, uh, the way he thought, the way he looked at food and his health and his body and himself and really inspiring. Um, he now has a passionate team of specialists and coaches who have created 500 plus success stories for reversing IBD sym symptoms I'm using his signature shield program, which he'll tell you about a, a bit at the end. But I love a so many of his messages, particularly in terms of letting the old self die. The person who it's kind of like Joe Dispenza's in order to create a new personal reality, you're going to have to create a new personality. It's that kind of stuff, right? Like everything had to change. Um, and so he's going into a lot of that and it's just really powerful. Um, we'll link up the links to his program, website, all of that in the show notes. So check that out if you'd like to learn more and yeah, giddy up for a really incredible story of overcoming incredible health scare and tons of incredible information. If you're having gut issues and suspect it could be any of this, this episode is for you. All right, here is Dane Johnson. All right, so Dane, I was telling you before we started that this is my first episode on Crohn's, which I didn't tell you is is personal to me because my um my sister's ex husband now, but you know he was like my brother in law forever had Crohn's, and so at least one of her kids is starting. He's t you know a teen, late teen, starting mm -hmm. to show signs of that. And I'm like, I can't wait to send this to them. <laughs> so I won't say any names, but nephew, this is coming your way. Um, and so I'm I'm just so excited because I know there's so many people out there that, you know, they've gone to Western medicine and they're just not, they're not like really sure how to manage it. And they're, you know, in the bathroom like 50 million times a day, sometimes for really long periods of time. And it sucks socially. It sucks on how you feel. And so I'm so excited that you're going to come share with us. And I want to, you know, set the stage with why you're so big on sharing about Crohn's, mm -hmm. ulcerative colitis, IBD. Would you mind sharing how you got to this place? Oh man, how do we all get to this destination? <laughs> right? Like a long, long time ago. Well, thanks so much for having me, Tara. I'm excited to be here. I dedicate this to anyone suffering such as your nephew. Let's put that positive energy out there to everyone who's got gut health disorders, autoimmune disease. This is dedicated to you. Let's get massive results. You can heal. And I'm going to deep dive on what I want you to get started with today to get massive results. And um, you know, the why, and then really what I want to talk about how I got here and then how I can help and why I feel confident in being a person who can come and lead this movement and, and push forward on what is possible with inflammatory bowel disease, gut health disorders, and even really autoimmune. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was just a good old boy from Virginia. I ate. I'm from Virginia too, dude. I'm from Richmond area. Nova, baby. Yes. I'm from um, Haymarket. <laughs> okay. okay. So if you know okay. Richmond, you might know Haymarket, Gainesville. It's like 20 minutes out of Fairfax. Okay. But I was okay. raised out there and we all I had cereal, 2% milk. I went Papa John's. I worked at Papa John's Pizza and Domino's for four or five years. So I ate that two to three days a week. Chipotle, everything I had was gluten. Everything was dairy. Everything was processed. That's how we grew up in the 90s. And right. that was just it. And uh, my parents were good people. We didn't have health issues. We didn't know anything about inflammatory bowel disease. We've never heard of autoimmune disease. We've never heard of ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease. None of that. None of it ran in my family. There was no genetic problems. Mm. I was a healthy kid. I was an athlete. I liked football. I loved uh, uh, basketball. Um, I played in high school. I was uh, the number one seed on my golf team in Virginia. Mm. It's all golf courses. There's a lot of golf courses in Virginia. And, and I was just a, a good kid who just kind of had this deep feeling that if you do right in the world, you don't do anything stupid, you'll be okay. Mm -hmm. And I, like every kid just kind of took health for granted because, you know, my parents in the seventies, eighties, they didn't have to worry about what they eat. They didn't have to worry about autoimmune mm -hmm. diseases as much in the fifties. 
Mm-hmm. So I just kind of grew up with that mentality. And um, all of a sudden, I'm 19 years old. I'm in college. I went to College of Charleston, South Carolina, and I'm drinking beers with the boys, you know, beer pong, pizza, beers, who can lift more, who can gain weight. I was just kind of, I was a good guy and we weren't too bro but we were also bros. Yeah. And uh, all of a sudden I started pooping blood. Mm. And I was like, did I have cranberries? What the heck is this? And I was scared. I didn't want to say anything about it. And I was just thinking, what's going on? I knew I was stressed because I was really into fitness and athletic stuff. So I was always trying to cut body fat, build muscle, cut body fat, mm-hmm. build muscle, take pre-workout, take creatine, create all this stuff from GNC, General Narcotic Center. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and it just, I, it started catching up to me and I was just eating like, oh, just, just being wild stuff. So I started getting the blood. It started going away by the time I was 22, like a few years later. It just wouldn't go away. 10, 12, 13, 14 bowel movements a day, little wow. sediment, little diarrhea, a little loose stool, blood in the stool, cramping, pain, urgency. You can almost feel yourself going gaunt. You can feel yourself kind of getting skinnier and tired. Mm. You get dark circles under your eyes. You're not sleeping that well. I'm starting to get cold sweats at night. And I had hid it from my parents for years prior oh, to that. Wow. Like at 19, no one had even heard of Crohn's class back in 2000. I graduated college in 2009, 2010, mm-hmm. something right there. I think it was a semester behind, but you know, I was ashamed. No one, we didn't talk about bowel movements. So I never mentioned it to anybody. Wow. And my, I told my mom what was going on and she didn't want to worry me, but she said, okay, let's go to the doctor, go to the doctor. He says, you have left-sided colitis. I did ulcerative colitis. I said, what the heck is that? Don't know what that is. And he goes, unfortunately, you're going to have this for the rest of your life. And it's an inflammatory, it's, it's part of an, uh, the IBD inflammatory bowel disease. I can't remember the exact conversation. It was a long time ago. I was in shock. And, you know, um, one thing led to another where they gave me prednisone, they gave me mesalamine. And I was, one point I want to make to everybody is, even though I run a natural medicine firm, global firm around Crohn's colitis now, I I didn't want to do natural medicine. I had no interest in the voodoo mm-hmm. and the woo-woo stuff. I just wanted my life back. Right. I just wanted my life back. I was just got out of college. I went, I just did everything society told me to do. Do your homework, go to school, don't skip get good grades, get into college, go get a, go get a job. And I had gotten a job and got diagnosed at the exact same time. Mm-hmm. So I'm working in Tyson's corner doing a, you know, so whatever a cubicle job. You've seen the movie, the office. That yeah. was me. Okay. That was me like <laughs> going numb in there and commuting an hour there, an hour back. And I just couldn't stop going to the bathroom. I was stressed out. I left all my friends. I was sleeping on my dad's pullout couch in debt from college. Mm-hmm. And it just kind of got worse and worse. And about a year later, I go to another doctor and he says, no, you have Crohn's disease. Mm. You don't have ulcerative colitis, you have Crohn's disease, mm. which the difference between Crohn's and colitis is a lot about where the inflammation is. So Crohn's disease is chronic inflammation of anything from the oral, um, esophagus, stomach, ileum, duodenum, all through the small intestine and colon. So the entire GI tract okay. inflamed. Predominantly, uh, Crohn's has a lot of ileum issues, small intestine issues. Mm-hmm. Um, also, if colitis is more or, you know, pan colitis, microscopic colitis, it's more of an inflammation of the colon or large intestine. So it's more localized. So I still had that inflammation there, but they were seeing inflammation in the upper GI. So then they Mm -hmm. changed it to Crohn's disease. And that's one of the core issues that anyone listening to this about diagnosis is the diagnosis of many of these autoimmune diseases can be easily interpreted one way or the other. It's, Mm -hmm. it's fairly loose. Um, And so it is subject to doctor interpretation. And it can be visual, it can do samples, but chronic inflammation in the bowel. So now I'm 23, 24 years old, and I'm taking prednisone, which is a uh, cortisone steroid. I'm taking mesalamine, and then they put me on 6-MP. I go on 6-MP, I get drug-induced hepatitis. I'm shivering through the night, waking up in cold sweats, 24, 25 years old. My life's just getting worse and worse and worse. So every drug I tried, there might be a little bit of a benefit, but then eventually I got worse. So it's like this... If you know stocks, it was like lower highs and lower lows, as they say mm-hmm. in the market, right? It was just kind of dwindling more and more. And long story short, I ended up going on methotrexate, 6MP, prednisone on and off for four years, antibiotics, all the antibiotics, Cipro, Fladril, oh, uh, all of them, Doxy. Mm-hmm. And then I was on, um, uh, I even tried LDN with a functional doctor. I did uh, Remicade, I did Intivio. Then I'm 20, 26 years old, and that's when it became life-threatening. So at 26 years old, I'm stressed. I'm trying to keep my career going and stuff I'm doing. 
And there was this one moment I'm sitting there and I knew I was losing my vision. I was, I was walking and I just felt wow. beyond sick. Like you just, it's almost like someone bumped you on the head and you're trying to walk. You just, you, you know, and wow. my colon was so inflamed. I couldn't absorb electrolytes. I was mm. uh, very anemic because of all the bleeding mm. that would kept coming back and forth and all the inflammation effects with IBD or any gut health absorption of nutrients. Right. So I'm not absorbing, my body's depleted, my reserves are right. gone. Mm. Uh, and, and then I had a stressful event happen. A lot of us, mm. they say, oh, what happened? It was a stressful event where mm -hmm. your adrenals finally get exhausted. Your immune system gets shot. It can no longer control the root issues going on, which I'll explain as we go, the root issues I found. So I say, I'm doing this job and I say, I got to go. I, I have something seriously wrong. I took some electrolytes. I drove myself to an ER room and I didn't leave for six weeks. Wow. So... When I say I didn't leave, I did not leave. I walked in there at 180 pounds. I left at 122 pounds. Wow. I lost the ability to walk. I was on um, infu 200 milligrams of infused prednisone. So an oral dosage of a cortisol steroid is usually like 50, 60 is max. Mm. So I was on 200. I was on um, every medication you can imagine. And then they put me on ambient, uh, painkillers. Then I went from morphine to Dilaudid. Dilaudid is about seven times stronger than morphine. Okay, wow. so it's, it's like legal heroin. So it makes you float. It makes the pain kind of go away. You can sleep a little bit easier. So I was on three grams of Dilaudid. That's about as the strongest dose that hospitals can give to a dying, a dying patient. Wow. And so I was passing away and I didn't know why. My mom flew in, my dad flew in, my sisters flew in. Wow. Mind you, they're from Virginia. I'm living in California. Mm. So they came to basically trade off staying with me through the night at the hospital. And it would be very shameful things where it would I'd be sitting there in pain and my mom would just hold a pan under my butt. I'd poop blood into the pan because I couldn't get out of bed. Mm. And then she'd dump it and do that 20 times a day. Mm. And I couldn't eat, so I was on TPN feeding tube. So they put a feeding tube into me so I could get um, nutrition that way because I just couldn't right. eat. And because I wasn't able to walk and I was bed rested, I had such muscle atrophy that I needed a wheelchair to move around. Mm. So I went from this kid who was normal, never been sick, and I know a lot of people were relating with this, never had a problem, to it hit, and it just went downhill and downhill until it was life-threatening. Now, I hope anyone out there, I don't want to scare them. Hopefully, if you've got diagnosed with an autoimmune disease or a gut health disorder, if I have anything to say about it, you will not have to get as sick as I did. There were a lot of mistakes, a mm -hmm. lot. No one knew. No one knew. Mm -hmm. Family didn't know. The doctors didn't know. No mm -hmm. one knew. Uh, we know now. Mm -hmm. So... Um, you know, it was, I had to go on an antiviral chemotherapy to save my life. And that was a wow. hint at one of my root issues because I was dying in the hospital and they didn't know why. And my mom became like the head doctor. So mom's in there calling every doctor mm -hmm. I'd seen in Florida and California and this natural. And, she, and I'd done so many colectomy uh, or colonoscopies. There was this one doctor in Florida and he, he, he got, my mom got a hold of him. You know, hard doctors to get a hold of. Mm -hmm. And he said, he said, PJ, I think what's going on is that there is a virus that I found in one of his colonoscopies and one of the samples, I saw cytomegalovirus. He goes, I saw cytomegalovirus in one of his samples. Very hard to find, okay? Because you're just taking little samples throughout the colon, tiny little samples. So it could mm -hmm. be there or not there, right? Right. And he said, I, th I have a theory that what's happening is his immune system is so weak, his body is so tired, he is lacking all the building blocks that the body needs to heal, that his body is collapsing, his immune system's collapsing, that virus is overtaking his body and that's what's killing him. Because I wasn't getting better on the steroids, I wasn't getting better on the antibiotics, mm. I wasn't even awake, mm. I was gone. I don't remember a, a good bit of this. Mm. Um, they pleaded with the doctors to give me the antiviral and because my insurance stunk. Um, and so they said, the sample was six grand, so it was probably like a fifty hundred thousand dollar medication. Oh my goodness. So once that they said, okay, we're gonna give them the sample. When they gave me the sample, I woke up before that I was unconscious. So December 14th, wow. 2014, they were telling my mom and I was not in the best hospital. So I just have to say that because my insurance wasn't amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I was too old for my parents' insurance, you know, all that mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. They said he might, he might not live. We don't know what, we, we don't know what's going on. We don't know what else to do. I mean, they'd already given me everything they, they had four antibiotics at once, plus 200 milligrams of prednisone, plus all the other bio immunosuppressors. By, I wasn't right. getting better. Right. And I was past the stage of being able to get the total colectomy where they wanted to remove my colon. They wanted to remove my colon months before that. I just kept saying no.
Right. So it's so bad they want to they want to cut out your colon and put a stoma bag on your stomach and then you poop out of a bag for a certain amount of time. And if you're uh, your niece is, or nephew is listening to this. Don't worry. You're going to be fine. You're not going to have to go with what I would go through, but take action right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I just kept refusing that. So it was too late for that. And then they gave me the chemotherapy. I woke up 24 hours later, I became conscious. I started being able to think. And then about mm -hmm. three days later, I checked myself out of that hospital and I wheelchaired my ass into a, into my house in Santa Monica, into a bedroom that I, you know, with no job. I know be able to work and I was housebound there for a year. Whoa. So I went from 122 pounds and I was already in school for natural medicine. I'd already been working with many naturopath professors, learning about the art, really changing my life. Like I had failed with natural medicine. Like two years before that, I was, let me try carnivore. Let me try this diet. Let me do bone broth. Let me do pureed carrots. Let me mm. make my own yogurts. Let me try hookworm therapy. Maybe that'll right. do it. Drink right. worms. I mean, it was, it was. <laughs> I was, I was going for it and I just right. never got real great results. I got some results, but I had enough results mm -hmm. to change my mind that this is what I was going to do. So I already decided to roll in natural medicine school. I'd already been making friends and getting around a lot of naturopath professors, going to lunches, dinners, just being around them for a good year, year and a half before I almost died. Mm -hmm. So when I think really God spared me and I was able to walk out of the hospital, I already knew what I was going to do. I already knew, like I had done everything. I'd gone to every hospital. We had spent thousands and thousands of dollars. And so I think that's one thing that saved me is my mind already had made up. I had already made up in my heart, my soul, my mind, where I was going to go. And what I was going to do is I was going to be the CEO of my health and I was going to control every facet of my life. I wasn't going to go try to make money. I wasn't going to try to be social. I wasn't going to try to date. I had lost my girlfriend during that time. That was the stressful event actually that thing caused it. We mm -hmm. were together for three years prior. Mm. And, um, and I just, I just was willing to do whatever. So one of the biggest things that changed, I want to give you right now, if you're sick, if you're looking at whether or not you should incorporate something, if it cannot hurt you and it can possibly help you do it now. <laughs> that was one of my first things. Cause, oh, is it plants? Is it meats? Is this supplement? Is it that? Is it this? Mm -hmm. So I, I first was worried, well, what if it makes me worse? A lot of people are worried that if that supplement or that herb or that detox or that liver support or that parasite cleanse, is it going to make me worse? So you have to start with your defense and your defense is if it can hurt and it can only help, that's where you start. And that's where I really started changing. And you have to realize that healing starts in the mind. So my mind had made up what I was going to do. I decided I was going to be the CEO, not the doctor, not my mom. Before it was my mom, it was the doctor. That didn't work. Then it was my mom. That didn't mm -hmm. work. Your mom, your mom and dad can't heal you guys. Okay. Mm -hmm. I had to be like a Viking warrior. I am the CEO <laughs> of my health. I am leading this ship, but I was smart enough and humble enough to enroll people to come teach me and be open-minded to what I don't know. I don't know holistic medicine like you do. I don't know drainage. I don't know pathogens like you do. I don't know functional lab work like you do. Right. I, don't, I don't know ER medicine like you do. I don't know the pros and cons of colonoscopy like you do, Mr. MD. I don't know if I, if I should be still, you know, prednisone or biologics, I had to be humble to all that. Mm -hmm. So I, and then I had to, I made a decision over time, not quickly that I was going to get myself off methotrexate. I was gonna get myself off Intivio. I was gonna get myself off prednisone. I was gonna get myself off painkillers. I was gonna get myself off ambient. Um, and then I was also on the capsule versions of an anti chemotherapy antiviral, which also was killing my own red blood cells. So it made me really woozy and mm. weird. I was like drooling from the mouth for like six weeks when I left. Wow. So I made that decision that that's where the, that's where the, my health is going as me as a company, almost like a metaphor of being a CEO, that's where I'm headed. And I'm just going to continue to move towards it and enroll the world, the universe, God, and anyone around me in that mission. And that took me a year and I didn't work. I didn't do anything else. That was it. I read it. I slept it. I ate it every day. That was it. And so when I first started, it was, if it can't hurt me, it can only help me. So what are things and when you get your mind right, guys, this is obvious. I want you right now, if you're listening, start saying stuff out loud. What do, what do you think is? What do you think the answer is? Start practicing right now being a creator. One of the things when I was traumatized and upset before I was able to heal is I was just waiting for the answer outside of myself. But when I truly healed, a lot of it came from within. But what I was reading outside, the books and the other people who've been down this path and the people who mentored me, it created a catalyst for me to also build my answer because I could take right. that and grow on it, right? Mm -hmm. like the idea of paleo, the idea of fa uh, fasting and right. uh, the idea of elemental 
uh, eating or the idea of nervous system and vagal nerve and meditation and breath work and oxygenating the body and drainage pathways and Epsom salt baths and all these things, right? So when I looked at it, here were some of the answers. Meditation and prayer. It didn't matter whether I wanted to have this argument about Jesus or Buddha or none of that. Mm -hmm. All I knew is praying to a higher power could only help me and not hurt me. Mm -hmm. So I did prayer and purpose morning and night. The nice. prayer, put it up into the world, let go of that shame. I let people watch me pray, get on my knees. I'm not just praying. I'm on my knees, <laughs> nice. ma'am. I'm on my knees, okay? <laughs> I'm not playing. I'm, I'm Put your shame, put your ego aside. Purpose, the purpose of my day is to be the best son, uh, friend, mm -hmm. you know, brother, that I can be on this planet and heal myself completely of this disease that I know my body can heal. That is the purpose of my day and I will live it fully. At the end of the day, the purpose of my day has been because when you're sad and you're alone, you're not going out on Friday night and you can't eat gluten, you can't have pizza, you have to be so convicted on your why. Because mm -hmm. I'm not sacrificing anymore, I'm investing. Mm -hmm. I'm not yeah. sacrificing. When I was chronically sick, oh, mom wants me to go on a gluten-free diet. Mm -hmm. Oh God, I got I can't have sugar forever. I'll never have beer again. I'm a mm -hmm. bubble boy. I love, I'm sick. I can't do anything. And I would enroll people in my victimhood. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I can't eat that because I have Crohn's colitis. I'm sorry. I can't be there because I, I, I don't know where a bathroom is. I'm sorry. I don't feel comfortable. And I know it'd be shame and, mm -hmm. and hiding. And mm -hmm. this is the same with IBS. This is the same with a lot of autoimmune is shame and hiding. Mm -hmm. So that was a fear-based reason to act. And a lot of people are listening right now, scared, anxious, resentful, upset, and it's fear driving them. And anything yeah. you're waiting for me to tell you the answer because you want to get back to normal instead of making a better version of you leave your old self and recreate a new version let go of that old person they do not serve you and they're mm -hmm. probably one of the reasons you got sick in the first place let them go i had to let me die the yeah. old me die i don't yeah. need alcohol I, I drank every i drank three days a week in college i don't need cereal i don't need gluten all i had was gluten until i was 22 23 years old that's it mm -hmm. that was all we had in our house was gluten something, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I recreated myself like a phoenix out of the ashes and there was pain, there was discomfort, there was uncertainty, there were foggy nights, there was why me, there was resentment towards God, towards parents, towards uh, government, towards doctors. And eventually it was, it's not my fault, but it is for damn sure my responsibility. It was, I'm gonna lead this. I don't know what I, I know, but I know I can manage and do these things. I can change how my vibrations, my frequencies, what I'm attracting. I can change what I think. I can change what I can read. I can change what I can walk. I can change when I go to bed, when I wake up. I can change what I put in my mouth. Mm -hmm. And so that was it. So what's the second thing there? I journaled. Mm -hmm. It can't hurt. Name one right. way journaling your stuff. So every right. day I could look back three weeks and tell you what my energy level was, what my weight was, what I ate, how much blood I had, how many bowel movements I had, if they were loose, if they had diarrhea, what time I woke up to have a bowel wow. movement. I could tell you I journaled every day for six and a half months. If you want my journal, click the link below. It's completely free. It's my gift to you. Okay. It's in the show notes. Okay. And it's, it's formatted exactly what I used while I was housebound, okay? And you can just rock that out for any disease, any disease. I also want to give you a cliff note for people who are excited about this but don't have Crohn's colitis. 75% of healing any disease is, is, is the same thing or similar actions. You need to work on drainage pathways. You need to stop a, a, allowing toxins in your life. You need to work on the pathogens that have most likely overgrown and the co-infections. So parasites, candida, yeast, mold, um, bacterial loads, um, you know, heavy metals, environmental toxins like glyphosate, you know, all of these things are disrupting our body and causing massive hormone issues. They're causing mental issues. They're linked to every single autoimmune disease. They're causing cancer, all of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's where the journal could be really impactful because you can take it and, and move that anyway. So that was another thing. A third thing I didn't know. I like a lot of you guys are hanging on a, on a nail waiting for me to tell you what to eat. Okay. Here's what I want you to do to start because I know there's people in here who are naturally vegan, vegetarian, paleo. Some people have histamine reactions and fat malabsorption. They go carnivore and they don't do well. Other people are literally going to get healed doing carnivore, right? We're all different. Mm -hmm. Here's what I want you to do. This can't hurt you. It can only help you. I want you for at least a month to only eat what you cook. Give me 30 days. Don't eat anything that you don't prepare and watch your intuition on what makes you feel good. Watch your variables of what it could have been go way down. Watch your freedom and confidence and your emotional power to be disciplined on what you mm -hmm. put in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Just 10x. You mm -hmm. will become a much more powerful person. Discipline is underrated. As, to be happy, you need to be disciplined, period. 
So we don't, what you don't realize is all these things that you are going through are just going to make you the best version of yourself and make you a happier person in the long run. Because the biggest reason why people aren't happy in life is they have no self-discipline. They don't have any values and they don't know what they stand for or what they prioritize. Mm -hmm. You could take a person to billionaire trust firm kid. And if, if that guy or girl does not have integrity, does not mm -hmm. know what they stand for, what their purpose is in life, they have mm -hmm. no connection to mother, mother nature. They're going to have a sense of emptiness and anxiety and depression. They're probably going to turn to drugs or some addiction, sex, gambling, alcohol, right. drugs. We turn when we feel empty. There's a lack of connection because there's a lack of discipline because there's a lack of integrity. And when you get sick, the universe, God, whatever you want to call it, pulls up and says, no more. You have to be in integrity with yourself. You have to take care of yourself to such a degree. And it's even though it's not your fault, it is now your responsibility. Do it or get more sick. You pick. And some of us are on that train and we think we're doing everything and you might be doing a lot and it might be really hard and that might be your journey. My journey was very hard. It was not easy. That's another reason I feel justified in being here is that I just didn't kind of have this. There's very few people I meet who had a harder experience with Crohn's colitis than myself. Mm -hmm. And I've, been, I've worked with people who've had this for 40 years, three surgeries. I never had a surgery. I can't, I can't, I, you know, I, I kept mm -hmm. saying no. Um, and, you know, I had an, I've, you know, I got diagnosed at 20, 22, I'm 37, 15 years ago. So, you know, it, there's a lot going on there. And to anyone out there who's feeling like, man, I've tried everything. A lot of the times when I work with someone who's been sick for 30 or 30 years, 25 years, they've tried the same thing for 15 years. It's not time that makes you wise. It's experience. Yeah. If you don't take action and you don't do mm -hmm. things, you're only going to get so wise. You can mm -hmm. go around the sun as many times as you want. Wisdom's only going up 1%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want a 30% increase in wisdom? Take action. You don't need more time around the sun. Sun helps because you only take so much action so much time. But one of the biggest problems is a lack of action, a lack of trying, making, becoming self-empowered, owning it. So that was a, a few things I did right there. I journaled. I only ate what I cooked. I did prayer and purpose every day. I made healing my number one priority. I, my bedtime was 930. Don't call me. Don't text me. Mm -hmm. I got I, I got Bob Marley on. Also, I never watched anything that was stressful or I watched things that made me laugh or made me smile. Nice. I don't need it. Mm -hmm. Outside, I'm outside 20 minutes a day. Good water, 20 minutes a day. I need that vitamin D. I need my feet in the ground. I, I, today, I still take care of like 40, 50 plants. Back mm -hmm. then, a lot more because I was not going, I was all, I had nothing else to do. <laughs> wow. I had a little thing that was really a big hack for me when I was healing with any disease. W trying to watch a tomato plant grow is nauseating. But if you look at a tomato plant every day, it's so little growth. But if you don't look at it and you come back a month later, it's astounding how much that tomato plant can grow in a month. It's the same thing in healing. Mm -hmm. and one day it's like, oh, I've been gluten-free for three days. How long do they keep this? 30 days of a comprehensive plan completely change your life. Mm. Now, it might not be long enough for your personal case. We're all different. Our hills and our, the, the degree at which we have to climb that hill is all different. And that's, that's just life. We got to accept it. Okay. But the harder it is, the more powerful you become. If I had kind of had Crohn's in class, I wouldn't be here working for myself, taking care of my family, being empowered to help other people and helping change lives around the world. That's because it almost killed me. Right. right. Batman was Batman because his parents were slaughtered in front of him. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious to ask you about this because I I've had a similar like it got so bad at me, sorry. It got so bad. It forced me to wake up and, and, you know, go through that whole recreate your reality. And I often marvel at this. Someone asked me this one time and I'll throw it your way too. They're mm -hmm. like, do you think that if you hadn't gone through that insanely hard part that you would have made these type of changes that you would have found this type of vigor? And, and I'm like, probably not. If I'm being really honest, um, I, I, like I look, it got so bad and that mine wasn't a health scare like yours. Mine was more like my entire life fell apart from unhealed traumas, mm -hmm. patterns that just, you know, an old version of me needed to die. And I, I, I look at that and I, then I look at other people who, you know, they really just have um, maybe chosen to improve their life, not from a place of it so bad, but just wanting what's best for themselves, which is kind of like what I resonate with more now. And I'm just curious on this because like, okay, so for example, a family, the family member of mine who had, uh, Crohn's like, I, to this day, I don't think he's, I, I think he's still just living with it like that. You know what I mean? And I, 
am curious since you've been helping so many people for so long with this, you've got your whole team. I mean, I'm, I imagine probably thousands yeah. of people have come through wow. your yeah, like coaching programs. What's yeah, that? We see about 120 clients a week. We have coaches, around right? The world. We have doctors on staff. We've worked with thousands with IBD. Wow. Okay. And so I'm curious about this. Like, um, have you seen, obviously most, probably not all, no one has had it as bad as you did, right? Like where they oh, like, oh, yes. oh. yeah, I'm a one percenter, but there's a lot of people who've been uh -huh. really, really, really terrible. Yeah. So I'm curious, like, you know, what, what is it I'd say when it comes to Crohn's IBD, yeah. that or keeps them like, stagnant that or gets, or? they know that gets them, to, gets people to change finally. Like, you know, oh. I've been, there's a oh. lot of different people, different reasons, but yeah. you know, I think a lot of people don't understand. And a lot of, some people are listening right now and they know the answer because they're chronically sick uh -huh. the is it's like trying to get out of a jail cell where there is no key. It's, <laughs> what, right. it's the hardest yeah. thing I've ever done mm. there. It's the wow. hardest thing. I mean, I mean, I know I was young, but like, right. It, it puts the idea of going to college to shame. Like it's so uh, most right. of life is just there. When you have a doctor who says there's nothing you can do about it, you're going to have this for the rest of your life. And all right. you can do is take these drugs or start cutting body parts. And then you look online and everything's right. contradictory. Right. And then you try some stuff and you're spending thousands of dollars and you're lost. Sad. I spent 30,000, not me. I was broke. Jeez. My parents spent 30 grand the first year on natural medicine convention wow. we got no i was more sick after the year after the 30 grand i come from a middle class family nine to five we were not rich 30 right. grand was a massive oh, wow for us. wow this is this is not something that's easy this is mm -hmm. not something that you can just oh you're doing this that's why i have to start with the mind that's why i have to start with passion mm -hmm. because what people healing starts in the mind we have mm -hmm. to start with hope and we have to start with that determination and conviction that i am no longer a victim mm -hmm. and I'm no longer going to put this in someone else's hands. The reason is, is because at, when you were four years old, Tara, and something went wrong in life and it wasn't your fault, someone else fixed it. Your mom, the school mm -hmm. teacher, the police officer, someone else fixed it when it wasn't your fault. Mm -hmm. This is not our fault, but no one else is fixing it. Mm -hmm. And who can we trust? Can we trust our government? Can we trust the food we eat? What about the air quality? What about the water? Where can we go? We're hearing the doctor say stuff that's kind of bizarre. Food doesn't matter. And I have a chronic inflammatory disease in the gut. And you're telling me McDonald's doesn't matter. All right. What? We do, who, who, where do we go? The reason I built this, the way I built it, I, I built this through, I think one of the reasons I've, the company's been successful is it was built through passion, heart, integrity, and trust and impact. It wasn't built to get rich. Mm -hmm. It was not built for that. Mm -hmm. I needed, a, I never had, I just built what I needed. I never, I, when I was trying to heal myself, I had never met anyone else who would heal themselves with Crohn's colitis. All I had was Jordan wow. Rubin's book. Wow. All I had was Elaine Godshell's book. All I had was David Klein's book. That was, I just had their, I had the words in a book. And I just put all my faith in him. The first time I read Jordan Rubin's book, it wasn't even the diet he's mentioned in the maker's diet. It was his story where I was bawling, crying, that I finally saw someone who I could relate with. Wow. That's how little I could relate with anybody. My wow. mom and dad had nothing like this. My sisters, my cousins, my friends, everyone I met in college. Now, I never knew a person. Wow. I was alone and people listening right now are alone. They're sick mm -hmm. and they have nowhere to go and they don't know who to trust. And they don't, right. and everyone is saying that they're going to save them for $5,000 or 10. It's like, they don't mm -hmm. know what to do. So okay. you have to start with two things. You have to start with trust. You have to start with integrity. If you're going to, you need a, a, a leader out there. You need to be a part of a community. So you just got to start with this. Can I put trust in this person? Because healing is not linear and it's not easy. It's freaking hard. Mm -hmm. So start with trust and integrity that the, that the, that the mission is right and that the purpose is right. And, the, and, and we need people in this world to lead us who've actually been through pain. Mm -hmm. You can't become a superhero and a leader without great pain. And you mm -hmm. were mentioning earlier about like purpose, like purpose, pain turns to purpose. There's very few people who find a sense of purpose in life without going through something. Everyone says, I, wanna, I don't know what I wanna do with my life. I always say, well, what's the hardest thing that's ever happened to you? Did you fix it? Then do that. Mm -hmm. That's all I did. Mm -hmm. I just took the hardest thing that ever happened to me and I made it my mission. I made it my career. I made it my passion. Do mm -hmm. you think when I was 22 years old, I was thinking, hmm, I really want to have a career in poop. That's just yeah. awesome. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that's a, you know, and that's what we're talking about. Poops, mm -hmm. bowel movements, inflammation. So 
you got to start. So that's why whenever I introduce people, it's, you have to relate. You have to feel like they can give you something. My functional doctors, my natural doctors, my conventional doctors, none of them had Crohn's colitis. None of them specialize in Crohn's colitis. No one could show me testimonies of healing Crohn's colitis. No one really uh, had a niche in it. No one could introduce me wow. to other people with Crohn's colitis with success. Mm. That was it. And so I said, when I started coaching and working with people, I've had it. I've reversed my colonoscopy. I've reversed my symptoms. I got myself off medications. I've never had a surgery. It's been 2015 since I took a medication. Can I do that perfectly for everyone? No, I'm not Jesus. I'm just a man. Mm -hmm. But can I get amazing results? And when I put my results against anyone on this planet, bring it. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Our results are massive. Massive. Our success rate's insane. Because success is also subliminal. I can't cure Crohn's and colitis, but I can help people reduce symptoms and deal with the root issues of why we got sick in the first place. The first diagnosis mm -hmm. of Crohn's class was until 1950. Some, right. It was, this didn't even exist in 1930. We're not even a hundred. What is that? 75 years. Right. What the hell happened? Mm -hmm. Something happened and it's obvious. It's all around mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that will actually be a great segment into, so now we understand the why and you know, the things that I found. So next I want to tell everyone listening, what are the root issues that I did find? Yeah. And I'm going to sum it up to you. And if someone had shared this and I believed him and I listened, it would have changed my life. I would have done anything that you were listening. I would have done anything to listen to this podcast when I was chronically sick. Be grateful. Realize what you have that would just, just came here and, and look in your heart and intuition on what you're going to do. You don't have to believe. You, uh, you got to believe in yourself and ask yourself, is this intuitively true? Is there something deeper? Okay. For me, we talked about cytomegavirus. Okay. How did I get it? God knows. Okay, you can get it anywhere. So the megalovirus affects those people with a weakened immune system. A lot of people with HIV or AIDS or other really terrible diseases will end up dying of cytomegalovirus because their immune system is so weak. Mm -hmm. My immune system had gotten so weak, the way I can chalk it up is that my body goes nuts on it. Two, I know that my body goes nuts on any kind of viral load. If I get viral load in my body, I get more of a cytokine storm, which is the innate immune cells that attack or suppress uh, inflammation in the body. And the cytokine, 75% of them live in the gut. They're, uh, you know, the dendritic cells, the T cells, they're in the pears patches along the gut lining. Um, and so that's a whole other topic about the gut lining, the malt, the gulp, and all that, um, which is a huge core issue for IBD is the weakened gut lining. And that's making our immune system um, uh, more sensitive to food and toxins and all this. So I had the viral load that went rampant. That's what nearly killed me. Years prior, I had, you know, I had uh, antibiotics, sugar, poor diet, all that stuff added up. Absolutely. But I also had massive loads of candida. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you, I stunk, I smell like an onion. When I was really sick, I smelled terrible. Oral thrush, bad body odor, acne, um, sensitivities to sugars and carbs and different starches. Um, if for even fermented foods like sauerkraut, that a lot of times that can be a candida overgrowth. What causes candida overgrowth? Bad eating habits, high stress, antibiotic use. Even one round of antibiotic use can cause dysbiosis. Candida is naturally found in the body, but when it overgrows, it can be detrimental to the body. Mm -hmm. So one of the big core issues is lack of balance. When you have one infection in the body, you're going to get more than one usually. If someone's chronically sick, they have what's called co-infections. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I believe that candida yeast or any fungal growth and viral load go hand in hand. I don't know what it is, but I see people with mold issues. That's another one. That's a form of fungus like mm -hmm. candida. Mold mm -hmm. is another root issue. I didn't have mold as much. It wasn't much for me, but it is one we see. Mm -hmm. When I see mold, when I see candida, I almost, I very often see a viral load issue where somehow that environment allows for viral load, viral load replication. One of my good friends, she passed away, but her name was Ann Baroque. She was a leader with multiple sclerosis. Check her out, The Candida Cure. She wrote a great book on candida. She said her root issues that kept her in a wheelchair with multiple sclerosis was Epstein-Barr virus and candida as the predominant two co-infections. Wow, for me, candida and cytomegalovirus. Mm. That's interesting, Anne. Mm. Hmm, I got Crohn's, you got multiple sclerosis. Mm. So again, I told you, I said this earlier, what's going on with one autoimmune disease is a problem with almost all autoimmune, the gut co-infections. I also had mm. severe H. pylori. Remember when I said they said you had ulcerative colitis with gastritis? Mm. I had ulcers in my stomach. Mm. I had upper GI issues. It was an H. pylori infection. I found right. massive loads of H. pylori in my functional lab work. H. Mm. pylori is a much bigger problem than people think. It's a huge upstream problem. It causes, it, it, it lowers stomach acid. It um, causes gastritis, GERD, 
It um, also creates an environment where parasites can get through the stomach acid so they can start thriving in your body. Also, uh, same thing with sugars and protein malabsorption. It is one of the biggest upstream problems with anyone with IBS or IBD is H. pylori. It also has the, uh, when you take betaine and other things that enhance stomach acid, they have the ability to burrow in the body. So they're mm -hmm. conscious, they can defend, and, and, and then mm -hmm. when the stomach acid, you get stressed, stomach acid goes low, guess what? You have a new H. pylori infection. No, wow. they just came back. They're just, wow. they were hiding. Mm -hmm. H. pylori also is known to have biofilms. Biofilms are uh, mu like mucus ma matrices that you get on your teeth when you don't brush your teeth. That mucus matrix basically hides infections from being killed from antibiotics from your immune system being aware and being able to fight them. And they live and spawn in there and then they come out of the matrix as they want, just parading mm -hmm. your body. And you're going, how do I keep getting these reinfections? Mm -hmm. They're in biofilms. Mm -hmm. So, and on and on top of that, H. pylori is extremely hard to test for because it's in the stomach. You can't test the right. stomach. Stool mm -hmm. analysis is the colon predominantly. Right. So small intestine infection and in stomach is really hard to test. Mm -hmm. There's no good test. You do the SIBO breath test, eh, it's okay. It's not mm -hmm. that great right? Mm -hmm. So that was another thing is massive H. pylori biofilms. I ended up having also large parasites. When I finally did parasites, I had tons of parasites come out. But if you don't know what you're doing, you should not be doing a parasite cleanse or a biofilm busting cleanse. You will get wrecked if you don't know what you're doing. It does, it's ninja mode. It's black belt mode. You need to do it, but you need to do it way down the road. So um, I also got C. diff on and off. I had Campylobacter. I had other yeah. types of SIBO. If you have IBS or right. IBD, you have SIBO. SIBO is not a diagnosis. It's a state of the microbiome. It's overgrowth. Right. It's dysbiosis. So um, I just gave you a lot of things. And I also had terrible drainage. I was covered in acne. I'm talking my full back, my full chest, all over my face. And that was, I mean, I had clear skin in high school. So this is like 24, 25, mm. covered in acne. I was, I was literally using five bottles of Neutrogena. Like I was just <laughs> bathed, didn't do anything. It was an internal problem. I could literally run a Neutrogena ad, figuratively speaking, on how much skin I clear. Where mm -hmm. women just think it's the hormones, they think it's their makeup, they think it's the pillows. Mm -hmm. No, it's an internal issue and your hormones are not gonna balance until your gut is in balance, okay? Mm -hmm. So um, that was a big issue, liver. Liver, 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 okay? Mm -hmm big root issue going on your liver creates what bile your gallbladder just stores it bile is what helps to with constipation bile also breaks down fats it also helps you absorb all your really important vitamins like your fat soluble adke okay without bile bile is also how your liver transport toxins out of the liver so if you have low bile production low fat and you're having you know uh, fat malabsorption you can't even move toxins out of the liver. Your detox pathways are a massive problem. That's also mm -hmm. you know, very true with methylation problems, right? Mm -hmm. So liver, okay? Now you have to understand how you drain. I think one of the biggest uprises, if I could really put something on it for all disease, it's gonna be toxin overload. I'd say pathogens is number two. And they're close, but toxic toxin overload, one of the biggest things that's changed in our life is the amount of toxins we're dealing with versus our parents and our grandparents and their great parents. I mean, it's absurd. 1989, if you talk to Zach Bush, he really, he really kind of turned me onto this. Um, in 1989 is when everything changed around uh, what the FDA was allowing as far as spraying glyphosate in the country. And then there, if you look at the rate of autoimmune and, and uh, the rate of autism, it's like, um, you know, what happened with, uh, you know, RFK talks about this with the vaccines and these uh, vaccines and what they're putting them in the heavy metals. Personally, I think that's a problem where you have multiple vaccines in one shot and the amount of mercury um, and other chemicals that are going in them. Chem Next is going to be like that. I mean, the glyphosate we talked about, we started spraying our whole country with glyphosate. This is a known carcinogen. It's known to cause cancer. We know it disrupts the microbiome. IBD, one thing you know for sure is your microbiome is all screwed up. Okay, the diversity and balance of the bacteria and its relationship to your body within your gut and in your mouth. Okay, and it's around your skin as well. So toxin loads, we have PFAs, forever chemicals in literally everything. Look at every gadget we have. And if it's convenient, it most likely has some kind of chemical in it. Sadly, it's not a conspiracy. Mm -hmm. It's true. It's, it's like we have these and we're drinking our water out of plastic bottles. Mm -hmm. They're, they, these in one study by The Guardian, look it up on Google, they found that people diagnosed with inflammatory bowel disease had a 50% increase in microplastics found in their gut. I'll give you a clue. Do you know right before I got diagnosed what I had? Invisalign. Mm. 
I had plastic in my mouth for a year and a half right before I got diagnosed. I'm not saying it did it, but I just think it's a coincidence that we should further research. Mm -hmm. All right. So microplastics as toxins and natural endocrine uh, disruptors. We're looking at um, moldy houses, carpets. Carpets are full with chemicals and they promote mold. You got to get rid of the carpets, the paint we're using, the gasoline, the, the fumes in the air, the water. If you look at tap water. We got there's so many chemicals going on in the air, the food, the water, all of that. And so what's happening is you add stress, you add poor diet, you add high sugar, you add no fiber. And then the body just starts breaking. I had a woman write me yesterday and she goes, my son is six with ulcerative colitis. Why does it seem like the age of diagnosis of these diseases is getting younger and younger? Tara, I've worked with three year olds diagnosed wow. two year olds. I've had families meet up with two year olds diagnosed with an incurable chronic inflammatory bowel disease at two years old. That's what insane. is changing is because the amount of chemicals, the amount of toxins being exposed to our people is just happening younger and younger at greater dosages. Mm -hmm. I didn't get this problem until I was 19. I was born in the 80s. Yeah. Okay. Not to mention the soils are depleted too. So we're no not, nutrients. even if you were to eat, and no one's eating that way. Most of the world is eating processed like garbage, you know, at least America. So you're like nutrient deprived. Even if you were eating like all apples and bananas and carrots and lettuce, you're still getting way less nutrients than we used to. So now you don't, you don't have the immune support from those vital nutrients. And on top of it, getting chemicals all at the same time. And welcome to America in 2024 and most well, of the yeah. other countries now too. Yeah. Welcome to the world. I'll give you another fun fact on that. If you look at, so my buddy is from Venezuela. If you know anything about Venezuela's economics, their country almost basically collapsed and they're, they're, they had hyperinflation. Their, their currency collapsed in a big way. They're doing, I think, better right now, but my my best friend goes down there and he knows what I do. He's been in the, uh, he served in the Coast Guard military for eight, 19 years. He retires at the age of 38 in like, I don't know, eight months or nine months or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. He's had so many health issues. He had no health issues when he lived in Venezuela, none. Yeah. Since he's been here, and I've seen a lot of clients from all over the world. I moved to America and I got sick. Mm -hmm. I was fine in South Africa. I was mm -hmm. fine in India. I was fine in all these places. Now it's coming in different countries, of course. But one mm -hmm. thing is we went and talked to his husband or his, his uncle and his brother and, and all his family out there. They had never even heard of inflammatory bowel disease. They didn't know what it was because mm -hmm. they don't have all this modern That's stuff. Right. And they tend to be all farmers. Right. They all eat local. They all eat mm -hmm. what they grow. It's very common because they just don't have a lot of money. We're seeing mm -hmm. these poor countries with way better health. Mm-hmm. So this is a massive, yes, it's on, it, writing's on the wall. And something I, my naturopath professor taught me that I'll never forget is he said, where there's an epidemic, there is always an environmental toxin. It cannot be genetic if it's an epidemic. It has to be environmental, mm. just by pure science. Right. So we know it's an environment change. Right. It has to be. And then we can point our finger to 500 things. I mean, you look at um, what happened with, um, with Monsanto, they got sued. They lost, they lost, a, I can't remember the size of the case. I think it was a few billion dollars. They had to pay out to people who were dying of cancer. That was proven caused by Roundup Ready glyphosate. We are spraying it everywhere. It's in the yeah. breast milk. It's in the rivers. Mm -hmm. It's in the rainwater. If it starts raining, there's glyphosate because it's, it can't get washed out. I mean, this is depressing stuff, but Dr. Bush told me if we stop spraying glyphosate right now, it'd still take the, the, the world something like 20 or 30 years. Don't quote me on how long, but wow. a very long time just to get rid of the existing glyphosate out of the right. world. For sure. So, so what are we going to do? So we went over these main problems. Now, what are we going to do about it? Now I want to give people more hope. What are we going to take action on? You have to decide that you want to be a free, healthy person and you have to stop poisoning yourself. Okay, and something that helped me make that change is uh, this just helped me. I looked at my grandfather and I saw a happy man. My grandfather was born in the 1920s and 1930s. He lived a great life and he didn't have any of these diseases. And he never opened a packaged food. In the 1930s and 40s, when he was growing up, there was no packaged food. There was no glyphosate. There's no such thing as organic. And then I asked myself a second question. I said, well, my grandpa and his grandpa never even were introduced to any of this stuff. They never had any of these diseases were they less happy than me? Meaning I asked myself in a spiritual question, is my life better in any way? If I become a happier person, if I've been able to live a more extraordinary life because of any of these things that my grandparents had? And the answer was no. <laughs> 
I don't have any more love, happiness, experience, connection, passion than they did. So I said, well, why, so why am I holding on to my right to eat this stuff that I know is poisoning me? Why, why am I yearning for it? And I came to the idea that it was an addiction. It was an addiction that everyone did. If everyone smoked crack, would you have a hard time getting rid of it? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It's like, mm -hmm. it's, it's because we're all doing it. It's the, it's the problem. Alcohol right. is right. a problem because everybody does it. Right. We don't even know how to go on a date without a drink. I can't even ask my friend to hang out unless I ask him to grab a beer. You can't even party. Think about, think about your birthday, New Year's, Halloween, Christmas, um, or your most fun times. You were drunk and you were poisoning yourself with crappy food. Mm -hmm. We do not celebrate without poisoning ourselves. So our best, we've, we've literally wrapped the idea around of celebrating life with poison. That's the first time in, in, in modern, I mean, in, in, you could say, well, beer and stuff, you know, 100 years ago, beer didn't have glyphosate. It didn't, it was made cleaner. It was a more pure, pure thing to have. And even then it was a problem. And I know people died of many diseases back then. So I want to get off the old. I want to learn from the old and then put our new stuff into it. I know it wasn't perfect in the past, but there are things we can cherry pick from our past that can help us now. So that's, um, that's a really big point. So what can you do right now is you've got to get that shift in your mind that you're ready to heal. So here's the first move I want you to make. Okay, I'm gonna give you some moves I want you to take right now, guys, that I want you to start taking action today to start changing your life and start taking your life back. And this right here might change, it might give you massive results. It could, it could possibly happen when you feel a lot better in five, seven, 10 days, just doing what I'm about to tell you, okay? Get pen and paper, all right? First thing I want you to do is I want you to focus more on what you're not doing than what you are doing, okay? Rule number one, because a lot of disease is more about the constant irritants, the constant, uh degradation of your body by you know introducing things that are terrible terrible i want you to try to get away from things that you know are not good try just cooking what you eat for 20 days it's not the end of the world just don't eat anything except you cook it just take a little extra time prepare some stuff and just see how you feel be courageous enough to explore it can't hurt it can only help okay so obviously you don't need to be cooking with seed oils. Obviously you shouldn't be having processed dairy and gluten and you shouldn't be having high sugar. What you should you eat? If you're doing well with meat, get grass fed meat, hamburger, steak, filet, wild salmon, uh, uh, maybe a rotisserie chicken. If you're going to have uh, plant foods, make sure that, you know, you try to reduce things that are really high in lectin skins and seeds. Basically don't eat scent skins and seeds for a little while and try to pressure cook things and make them very bioavailable, uh, make them absorbable. And if you eat from the earth, you might feel a lot better. And if you intuitively know, I just had this vegetable, I just had this salad, I just had this thing and I feel, I don't feel good, then you can know you can cut that out. That's what intuition is. That's the God-given right of intuition. So follow your intuition, okay? So try to only eat what you cook and try to focus more on what you're not doing than what you are doing. Because so many people get caught up and it's like, what do I eat? It's like, just, just don't eat this and go eat, cook it yourself. Eat it organic and and um, don't have processed foods. Go. Just whatever. That's mm -hmm. if you want, I understand that's how your grand mm -hmm. your great grandfather ate every day for 85 years. Okay. Mm -hmm. That was true every day. There was no such mm -hmm. thing as a Snickers bar. Okay. So uh, that's what I want you to do. Third thing is if you were chronically sick or you want to learn, I want you to journal. I want you to just write down what's your energy? What are your balance? What do you intuitively think is causing more of it or less of it? Okay try just get on your phone you're on a bus you're, you're in a car just try to journal okay if you're having trouble doing what i'm doing it's because your health is not your priorities yet and that's where you have to emotionally work on this that's where you might need to see somebody and talk to someone why am i not putting my health goals above all this other stuff you've you've already had that food you've already eaten that you've already gotten drunk a thousand times you know what ends what happens at the end of that road if you don't take action, you won't get wise. You won't grow. Okay, so whatever I say, whatever anyone says, I promise you this, it will be uncomfortable. Change and success is usually uncomfortable. Why? Because if it was a comfortable answer, you would have already done it. You would have already thought about it. And so you got to get used to this idea that change is uncomfortable. It's the same thing getting in shape. It's the same thing having a great marriage. It's the same thing liking when you look in the mirror. Same thing about being a great father or mother. It, it, it's the same thing of finally getting that first date or getting that prom or, or feeling like you have good friends in high school. You gotta, you gotta get uncomfortable and go talk to someone and say hello and say, I like you. 
and put yourself out there, right? It's part of life and you get wise from it. You won't be defeated. You'll be okay and you'll grow and you'll be stronger from it. So I want you to uh, do that. Next is I want you to try to find a community that you can connect with that's solution oriented. One of the biggest problems that's happening is everyone's telling everyone what's wrong and people are not telling people what's possibly right. Okay. So what I mean by that is if you have a problem, I want you to start enrolling people in possible solutions. I want you to get around people who are talking about what they're doing instead of what their problem is. Okay. When I went on Facebook groups to look at IBD and, and, and support groups, it was all, it was like nine out of 10 posts were how people were suffering and asking for help. And one post was a potential option. Okay, you need to get enrolled around a community that's solution oriented. I built something called IBD University. It's only IBD members on your phone talking to each other every day with me and my professors and doctors talking every week doing Q and A's. It's amazing. It's only it's IBD and IBS. Okay, you can check it out. Just type in IBD University. Okay, so um, you want get a part of a community. Not many people are able to be successful without a community. Do it. Meaning humans did not rise and accomplish alone. They did it together. Okay, if someone was to build a house, they built it together. You know, watch the Patriots, 17 something. They all knew how to do carpentry. They all built each other's houses. They all helped each other farm. No one does anything independently. You are not going to, you, you can't do this yourself. You need to enroll a team, a community. Who else is doing this? Who else is trying to grow? Who else has, shares your values? It's the same thing in business. It's the same thing in career. And life is very much the same. Okay, so the next thing I want you to do is say, write it down, put it in your goal list, in your journal. I want to find a supporting community. I want to find with people who've already done this, people who are doing this. I want to be able to share what the results they get. I want to be able to share my results. I want to pay it forward when I heal. Where am I getting connected? One of my biggest reasons I failed is I was alone. I was isolated. I didn't know where to go. And I built this because all I had was books. I read say, like insatiably four hours a day when I was stuck at home. I mean, Tony Robbins uh dispensa um i read a lot of functional doctors who were local even my professor wrote a book i was reading that i was just reading eckhart toll i loved spiritual books self-help books um uh i read all three of jordan rubin's books patient heal thyself uh the digestive track i think that's with uh, uh dr brasco and then i read his maker's diet i just i read tons of books and then I would, I would cherry pick and implement it right in my journal. Tomorrow you will do this. Tomorrow you will change that. Tomorrow you will do this. Um, so I think I'm starting to become like Dr. Bush here, Tara, when you <laughs> gab for an hour straight and don't let you talk. What do you think? No, it's amazing. Um, I love hearing, uh, being able to hear how you have implemented so much of what you did, um, you know, kind of going back to what I was saying before in terms of like, you had such an extreme, like, uh, I look at it as like a catapult, you know, when you have to like really pull back before you can really soar, like yeah. you had a really extreme pullback. And I love that. It sounds like what you've created is implementing the things that you learned in that deeper place of pullback than maybe quite as far as other people go. You learned, okay, journal, you know, the journaling thing. It's like, I, I totally resonate as a coach. It's like every method I can think of to heighten awareness, self-awareness. Right. So for me, that's meditation. Even yoga is part of my training once a week. Yes. Cause it helps with mobility and stretching all that, but also it enhances body awareness, you know, and that, so you have that journaling awareness of what did I eat? How did I feel? You're turning it back the power into them. You're helping them get into that mindset of, I have to effing own this, yeah. you know, and keep teaching tools for that. And then bringing in their own relationship with food, you know, bringing it like mm -hmm. their, their power back to them of like, I can mm -hmm. make it. And I feel like that sometimes with my clients with gut issues, I'm just like, Hey, like, okay, can I have this? I'm like, I, I don't know. Let's see, you know, let's, <laughs> let's see what your body says. Um, you know, and not that it's all, it's not that you're always going to get digestive symptoms with other, you know, someone who doesn't have IBD may have a food sensitivity to something and they're going to have headaches. You know, they might not have a, you know, bloody stools, <laughs> probably not. Um, they might have low mood and things like that, but you know, outside of your realm of things, but like being aware of like, Hmm, that's interesting. If when I keep eating that, I do kind of go into a bad mood for a while after that. Interesting, you know, and obviously with IBD, it's going to be a little more uh, obvious. Um, and so I love that you're bringing that awareness back to people and they're going on that kind of simultaneous, uh, reconnection with body, taking their health in their own hands, but also going through like a spiritual mindset, empowering journey, which I totally resonate 
um, with, because uh, that's how I do my coaching too, in my own way, you know? So thank you for bringing that to the table. And I, I wanted to highlight, clarify again for people real quick. So you have this um, IBD university, which is like a community, yeah. correct? Yeah. But before we even get into that, I did want to finish one thing I want to do for today. Oh, I, sure. I want to add one more. This is generic. And I'm going to mention something about food, but realize everyone's different. So you, this is when we are talking about food is you have to become the CEO here, guys, everyone listening. I, I can show you a thousand ways of work with hundred people, but you've got to build that confidence so that you can continue mm -hmm. to lead yourself. Mm -hmm. And I'm, if I give any plate of food to a million people, the law of averages will eventually kick in. 30% are going to do great. 30% are going to be neutral and not sure if it's helping. And then 30% are going to do terrible and say, this is snake oil crap. That has been the problem with every famous diet that's ever right. existed. SED, right. AIP, carnivore, vegan, raw mm -hmm. vegan. Mm -hmm. They've all been eventually gotten to those metrics where, and that's what everyone starts arguing online. It's like the same thing as like, who's right. your, like, what, what diet is your God? <laughs> and then <laughs> totally. they fight for it. And then it's totally. like. So what I do is I teach food philosophy. The food philosophy means to be able to nice. look at any plate of food and assess its risk for you personally in that nice. moment. Nice. So Excellent. it's kind of like people right now as adults, we're like a three-year-old cross, crossing a road who has no idea of how to break down the risk of crossing a road. Right. You see a three-year-old cross the road, you're like, no, right. that's what's going on with adults <laughs> with food. Okay. Totally. Totally. You can't assess its risk. You were waiting for me to tell you, so, mama, can I cross the road? And then mama assesses it and goes, yes or no. And then the, mm -hmm. we as diets are going, nutritionist, can I eat this? Mm -hmm. And you're going, right. you got to learn this. you got to learn to assess the risk because you don't get intuitive. If you don't eventually right. teach your kid, they're not going to be able to survive on their own. <laughs> right. Okay. And because this is, and also you have so much trauma around food because you don't know if you have to understand food philosophy. So what is the risk of food? So one thing I would say, okay, I want you to take this, take this to the bank generically for all of us. What I want you to do is say, if you can't squish it, don't eat it. If you're sick and your stomach's not feeling good, I want you to do this. I want you to, if you can't squish it, don't eat it. No seeds and no skins. If you go to a restaurant or wherever you go, I'm not saying it needs to be baby food mush, but think about the most delicious carrots in the world, Tara. Are they hard or are they soft? For me, they're soft. Me too. For everyone. Sure. If you were a billionaire <laughs> on a yacht and you said, give me a $10,000 plate of dinner, <laughs> would you, and this is a $10,000 plate, sil sterling silver, you're a billionaire and you're like, give me the best thing you got. You're, you're in Mykonos. You're right on the corner of Mykonos in this big yacht. Give me the food. Would it be organic or would it be processed? <laughs> organic. Would it be soft and juicy? Or to be dry and hard, soft and juicy. What we as kings and queens and would eat, and what's actually good for us, are very similar. Make sure it's soft, delicious, juicy. Make sure it's it's squishy, it's gourmet. Like, have you ever had dry mm -hmm. salmon versus a soft, juicy salmon? Mm -hmm. That increases bioavailability. Why do you think mm -hmm. we have soups when we have the flu? Bioavailability. Mm -hmm. Okay, warm bioavailability, right? Even Ayurvedic teaches us this. Mm -hmm. So what I would say is if you can't squish it, no seeds, no skins, you can't squish it, don't eat it, no seeds, no skins. That's going to generically help you, whether you're plant-based, you're carnivore, wherever you are, it's generically true. Okay. Another thing that might be generically true is a shake. A shake a day keeps the doctors away. I like to say for long-term success, because you can concoct a shake that's already pureed. Okay. So the, what that's going to help is it's going to reduce inflammation, increase nutrient absorption. That's one of the rules I teach on food philosophy is that's all you want from food. You need to simplify food. What do I want from it? I want to increase nutrient absorption. I want to decrease. I want to eliminate inflammatory response. That's it. I don't care if it's meat, plant, something from the moon. It doesn't matter. That's it. If it doesn't do that, it's not good. Mm -hmm. And so you have to see how you respond to those truths. The number one cardinal rule of food philosophy is the manner at which it's prepared. It's not whether this plant is bad or this animal based is good or bad. It is the manner at which it's prepared. That is the ruler is the king is the superpower of food. It is not 
whether this food is bad or good. That is true for oatmeal. That is true for chicken. That is true for everything. It is the manner at which it's paired for food philosophy. So if I go to a wedding and I see hors d'oeuvres, I can look at it. I can see how it's prepared. I can see what's in it. I can assume uh, and I even ask what kind of oil it's cooked and all that. And I can assess the risk there. I might eat something that I might celebrate with because we don't cheat. We only celebrate. I might have something that's not perfect for me because I'm feeling good. It's the middle of the summer. My immune system is great. My balance has been great. My lab work looks great. And I'm going to then have a glass of wine, champagne. I'm going to eat this, eat that, and have fun. But that could have been the middle of winter. I'm not feeling good. I'm getting over COVID. Me and my wife have been stressed. And I see that same plate, same dinner, same uh, wedding. And I say, nope to none of it. Same person, same disease, two different answers. Yeah. So that's what food philosophy is. It's getting back to our adult nature of being, of yeah. just being able to assess the risk. Exactly. And exactly. forget the diets, build a lifestyle, forget awesome. the diet. Yeah. So that's that's the last thing I wanted to give you guys and, and a shake, you know, things like you can look at if you it, what I did is I cherry picked. If you look at food philosophy, monosaccharides are a lot easier to break down in polysaccharides. Every diet's going to tell you to really focus a lot on those monosaccharides, which tend to be fruits. So you have to be just careful of the sugar. So you might look at a, a few different minimal fruits, manage the, um, the the sugar. You might look at a protein source. I love bone broth protein. I don't like, I do some whey isolate. I really don't like it as much. I find bone broth protein's amazing. Dr. Axe has got a good one. Designs for Health has got a good one. Um, you know, and you can decide if you want to put chocolate in there or get it unsweetened, but you want organic, clean, and uh, you can put a lot of stuff in there. But today, I'll give you an example of what was in my shake today. Last thing, I hope you guys are getting massive value. Please like and share this podcast if you are. Support Tara. If you're liking this, I'm giving you the heat today. I hope you're getting a lot out of it. Here's what I had in my shake today. If I had had this when I was chronically sick, I would have been in an ER room. I would have been very, very sick. I could not handle this. I hope that gives you an insight on food. It's not whether you can handle it or not. It's if your body is ready to handle it. Because increasing your food variety is like physical therapy. You shouldn't go for a run, run a 10-mile race if you haven't prepared. And you shouldn't be eating certain things if you haven't prepared. Exact same thing, okay? Do the physical therapy a lot. But I had a shake with arugula, broccoli sprouts, banana, bone broth protein, collagen, creatine, essential amino acids. Um, uh, and then I had uh, raspberries, cranberries, blueberries, strawberries, uh, sprouted flax and chia seed, um, water. Uh, what else did I put in there? I think I put a little raw kefir. Um, I kind of switch up that. And I think that, oh, and then I put sprouted walnuts pistachios, uh, macadamia nuts, and pecans. Raw. Wow. Powerhouse. Awesome. I mean, the amount of fiber. <laughs> yeah, right. And Amazing. what the fiber does is it regulates. Yeah. It, I mean, polyphenols, raw enzymes, yeah. uh, natural fibers. The, and the fiber regulates my blood sugar. Yeah. And the fiber is a natural binder and sweeper of the colon and the gut. Totally. Yep. And awesome. so I just, I got my full day of fiber in one go. <laughs> awesome. Right? Thank you so, for sharing. Yeah, wow. now, don't, don't do that now. I hope you heard me on that. Yeah. This, is content, <laughs> this is not short form content. Mm -hmm. Take your time. That takes time to work it up. But I've had totally. a lot of clients do great long term because when you puree the food and you mix it, it's just easier to break down. And that could be the therapeutic way you do physical therapy on your gut to handle those fibers. Right. I'm right. not eating them. I'm pureeing them. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Awesome. Dane, thank you so much. How do people find out more if they want to explore yeah. what you have to offer? So Crohn's Colitis Lifestyle.com is our company. Uh, we work with people all around the world, every country. Um, and we've got coaches all around the world. We have uh, two things, really. Shield programs, our signature plan, where you get a, you get a coach included, a private coach. Plus, you get the uh, lifetime access to the program. You get supplements included. And we build a customized plan for you. So it's a do-it-for-you method. Um, that's our signature plan. That's where we get massive success. We did just launch something called IBD University for people who are on a budget. Shield program will cost some money. It's, there's no way around it. I can't get you a coach. I can't do all that unless it costs a few bucks. Um, so if you're not in a place to invest in your health and you just need a community, you need a home, that's IBDU. So you get access to our community. You can come and listen in on our live professor trainings. We do four a week. So we have a professor of nutrition, a professor of herbs and supplements. We have a professor of mental health and trauma, and then um, a professor of protocol, IBD protocol and strategy. So you can come listen to their lectures, their old lectures, ask Q&A, and it's an app on your phone. It also has a search engine. So imagine Google just for gut health. Mm, nice. It's just like integrative therapeutic protocol strategies as a search engine. Awesome. And awesome. so we just oh, have yeah. PDFs and breakdowns and it's, it's only about three or four months uh, old. We have about a thousand members, um, um, around probably 1200 members total. And our, our mission is to create a home for people with Crohn's and colitis. Like my mission is not just to be the world's best Crohn's colitis 
coach. I want to be uh, the best CEO of Crohn's Colitis Solutions so people around the world have a home and a place of integrity to grow and connect. Awesome. Thank you so much. We'll link that up um, in the show notes, Crohn's Colitis Lifestyle.com. And also you can find them on Instagram at Crohn's Colitis underscore lifestyle. And also Dane Johnson, one, if you want to follow Dane himself, Dane, thank you again. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for doing that hard work of all that, but on your own crazy intense journey so that you could bring this all to help others. It's, it's seen and appreciated. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. God bless guys. Happy healing.